Hello everyone, welcome to the Future DDS Dental School Experience Series, where we help you decide which dental school is right for you. Now every school is unique and will provide you with a different experience, and we thought to ourselves, who better to explain to you what a school has to offer than a student who actually goes there. Our goal in this series is to give you a first-hand perspective of every dental program in America, and ultimately help you make the right decision. So, today we'll be showcasing Laura Vong, who is a D2 at University of Washington School of Dentistry. How are you doing today, Laura? Hello, I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting me into this call. Thank you, thank you for taking the time out. I know you're extremely busy. I know you're studying for boards. Um, this, is, this is really, really special for us, so thank you so much. Yeah. So, Laura, uh, we'll go ahead and start, because like I said, I know you have a lot to do today. Um, can yeah. you please tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, where you went to undergrad, and why you chose dentistry? Yeah, okay. So my name is Laura. Um, I currently live in Seattle. I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. I went to the University of Washington for undergrad, uh, majored in biology, took a gap year, uh, decided to go to the University of Washington Dental School because I love this school so much. Right. Um, what made me this is such a tough question, I feel like. What made you want to, <laughs> There's so many things that made me want to go into dentistry. Um, but I think ultimately when it comes down to it, to keep it short and sweet, um, the thing that makes me, that made me really want to go into dentistry was just the fact that I'm able to use my hands. It's very artistic, um, but still in the healthcare field, I'm able to really help patients. And really the educational part, the educational aspect of dentistry is what I really love because I was debating between medicine, dentistry, uh, and teaching. At one point I wanted to be a teacher and I thought that out of all the healthcare fields, because I love sciences, I think that dentistry really allows you to teach your patients, mm -hmm. really, um, transform their lives. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. you said you took a gap year. What did you do? Did you do like a master's program? Did you work? What'd you do? Mm -hmm. So I decided to take a gap year because I felt like I wasn't ready to apply yet during my junior year. And so what I ended up doing was I did research at the Center for Pediatric Dentistry, which is through um, the University of Washington School of Dentistry. Okay. At the time I was doing some clinical research and so that was part-time. The other half of my time was spent working at Molly Moon's Ice Cream. It's one of Seattle's most popular ice cream shops. Okay. Yeah, so it was, it was like a fun job and then I had the research job. I also did, uh, I worked in a dental office every other Saturday. What I did was I just worked at the front office, so uh, I got to know a little bit about billing insurance and mm -hmm. doing receptionist stuff, which was really nice because most dentists don't get to experience that side. Right, right, no, definitely. Okay, great, yeah. great. So now I wanna ask you a question about your school. Um, so you said it's in Seattle, Washington, correct? Yeah. So what's that city like? I heard it's like pretty rainy. Well, it is. No. <laughs> no, it is. Yeah. I've lived here um, all my life. I love Seattle. It's, I wouldn't say it's a big city, um, but it's becoming bigger. It's becoming more popular. Uh, I, I love this city. It's green. It's rainy. But because of the rain, we get all these beautiful trees. We get seasons. Okay. We get nice seasons. Um, uh, I just... I think it's a great city. I love living here. I think it's great for students because you're so close to so many different things, mm -hmm. so many activities to do. Uh, yeah, I love it. it. Is your school located like in the middle of downtown or? Mm, it's, it's really close to downtown. It's, mm -hmm. We have a train and it's like a 10 minute train ride to downtown. Mm -hmm. but it's really close. It's, I would consider it just downtown Seattle. Okay, okay, cool. And so let's talk about your class size. Uh, mm -hmm. How many students are in your class? Um, we've got 63 okay. students. Uh, I guess, uh, sorry, let's re redo that. <laughs> so we've got around, I believe, 63 students from the US, and then we have international dentists that just joined us. So they're international students, and they're about, I think there are seven, seven to 10 of them. Okay. Well, around 70 people in my class. In my and class. Do y'all kind of like share uh, classes with the med school students? Because I know some schools do that where like for D1 year anatomy, for example, like everybody will be in one classroom. Do y'all do that as well or is it just completely separate? We 
we kind of do that so for our foundations classes mm -hmm. uh we do that during first year mm -hmm. so we'll we'll sit in on the med school classes okay technically they're like med school lectures but we sit in on them okay okay yeah. cool cool okay so i want to know i know you went there for undergrad but like what really made you you know decide on uw being your top choice you know like was it the fact the faculty was amazing? Did you just really want to stay at, like in the same area? Like, what was that one thing that really made you want to stay? Uh, for me, it was family. Okay. Because my family's here. Mm -hmm. um, it was also just I'm I loved the school for undergrad, and so I was like my undergrad experience at UW was the best, mm -hmm. and so I was. I really just wanted to go to UW again for dental school. Mm. Um, but there are a whole bunch of different factors. But I think mostly, like, my number one would be being close to family. Yeah, um, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wish, you know, my family's in Atlanta, so I get to see them <laughs> maybe three times out of the year. And it just, I don't know, it's, it's sad. But, you know, whenever we do see each other, it's always a celebration. So yeah, it definitely good. makes sense why you would stay. And so if you can, I kind of want to go back in time a little bit. Um, to your interview day, you know, a lot of our viewers are extremely, extremely nervous, um, you know, just about the interview. And granted, I'm sure both of us understand why, because we were yeah. nervous <laughs> at first as well. But oh, if yeah. you can, can you kind of walk um, our viewers through the interview process at your school? Yeah, I will. Okay, so our school is different. We do MMIs, which is multiple mini interviews. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a, it was a two-day interview. The first day was just... Uh, tour of the school, um, basic PowerPoints of what we should know about the school. Mm -hmm. And the second day was the actual interview day. So mine was in the morning. Uh, it was actually my favorite interview out of all the interviews that I went to. Okay. Um, the format of multiple mini interviews, because what we did is we just rotated through different stations. I believe there were seven, seven or nine stations. Mm -hmm. And they were, if you're not familiar with multiple mini interviews, um, it's just where you go into a room, you're presented with either a scenario or a question, and you talk for <laughs> seven to eight minutes. Right. And I really liked it. The, um, the people who were interviewing us were very, very nice. Um, and it was just a really good interview. So I understand that people are really nervous, but I think that this is kind of nice because at UW, for multiple mini interviews, the interviewers know nothing about you, so they can't judge you. All they know is you when you walk into the room and you talk, and that is their impression of you, and I think that kind of gives you leverage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, which I really liked. So I liked it a lot. Great, great. And so you interviewed, obviously you got in. And so now I want to ask you about that transition. Like, did y'all have an orientation week uh, where they kind of, you know, introduce you to all the different classes, the buildings, or whatever it may be, or did they kind of just throw you into the fire and say, hey, welcome to dental school? Yeah. So I really liked how our school did it. Um, we actually started in July of the first year. Um, and we had a whole orientation week. We even had a little getaway that they planned for us. It was like a one night. Um, retreat, I guess. And that was like our second day of school so we all went over there. It was like great for bonding. And then we had like tour of the school. And then the first week was just really nice and easy transition mm -hmm. into school again. Um, and then, yeah, they transitioned us really nicely. Okay. okay, so for everybody who doesn't know, Laura actually has a, a YouTube channel as well. Um, it's Laura Smiles great channel of course she <laughs> definitely recommends it um and on her channel she actually does a couple of day in the lives of a student and so for our viewers who haven't actually watched the videos yet uh can you kind of give them a timeline uh, throughout your day just so they can see uh what a d1's uh schedule kind of looks like granted knowing yeah. you're d2 but you can think back to that time. yeah all right so for first year i usually woke up around 7 a.m got ready uh, got to school by 8.30-ish for the first class. Um, usually in the morning, we had a more dental-related class, so like uh, occlusion, operative, perio, and then we'd have lunch uh, around 12.30 to 1.30, mm -hmm. 
And then at 1.30 is when we uh, usually had our foundations courses, which is our fundamental courses like anatomy, the biologies, um, stuff like that. And then that would usually go until 3.30 for the lectures. And then we have something called small group after, which is kind of like your quiz section. It's where you actually broke up into smaller groups and then we had discussions and went through cases. And that lasted usually one to two hours. So we were usually done with school around like 5.30 if we didn't finish earlier. And then after that, most of the time we were in the lab practicing waxing, wax ups of teeth or practicing drilling. And usually stayed until maybe 6, 6.30 and then went home. And studied. And studied. <laughs> yep. Lots of studying first year, yeah. A lot of it. Okay, great. And so say somebody is watching this interview, you know, and they're like, wow, Laura has convinced me. I want to go to you, Dub. Um, <laughs> what should you, or what would you tell them that they should make sure that they have on their application? As far as like, should it be a lot of community service or should it be a lot of shadowing hours? Like what's something that um, University of Washington really, te really uh, focuses on and looks for in the applicant? Mm, I think that something that UW really likes mm -hmm. on your application is research. Okay. Um, our school, Settle School, our, our school is very heavily research based. Mm -hmm. And so our researchers are well known. Our professors are well known in their research. And mm -hmm. so I think that a lot of my classmates did research and that really probably help them look good on paper. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, okay. So get your research in if y'all haven't already. Get your research in if you can. Right, if you can, if you can. If not, uh, but. <laughs> if not, then it's totally fine, but it looks good. Yeah, try to. Okay, great. Yeah. And so we all know that dental school is extremely, extremely stressful. And I think that, you know, especially right now with mental health being like a huge topic within the health community, um, it's something that people are starting to ask about when it comes to their school and just how like their school kind of promotes a great mental health. So like, does your school have any type of programs, like whether it be like yoga, like meditation, do they talk about anything like health, mental health related or? We touch base on it a little bit, but it's mostly our schools as a chapter, as does the American Student Dental Association. Um, they put on a lot of events for wellness. Mm -hmm. Nice. They'll do, I think we have like a, we had a hit course one time. Mm -hmm. We have like puppy therapy. Uh, we'll do like little fun activities. Our school also does like socials where we'll just like relax mm -hmm. and together. Um, specifically for my class, a lot of us actually work out together. So that's really nice because it's a really, really great way to de-stress. And so I was going to ask you that next, like, what are the main ways that you de-stress? So working out, do you, uh, do you kind of like break down everything? Whereas like you have a moment to yourself every night for like an hour, like, are there any other strategies that you use in order to maintain? Because we know it is crazy going through this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, YouTube okay. definitely is a nice outlet because it lets me be creative. It lets me just like talk about my about my experiences. Um, working out is definitely another big one for me. I think that uh, cooking is becoming more of a little hobby that helps me like relax and just uh, makes me happy. But I think that's pretty much it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, trying to up, yeah. I'm trying to pick up cooking too, but I'm just not good. <laughs> like, I'll cook all the food and not eat any of it. It's really bad. It's really bad, but okay. Um, so really quickly, and we're almost at the end of the interview, I want to ask you about just like a unique experience that you had at your school where you were just like, you know what, this is why I came here. Like, whether it have, may have been like a faculty reaching out to you and really taking the time to like teach you something about operative or whatever it may be. Like, have you had one of those aha moments? Like, thank you. I'm so glad I'm here type of moments with you, Dub. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Fix pros hey. <laughs> has been a struggle for me. Same. Same. We're in our, <laughs> we just finished our second quarter of fixed pros. Mm -hmm. And 
I think that's something that has been so special to me is how much the upperclassmen have helped me. Yep. And that's just like a recurring thing at our school. Like the mm -hmm. upperclassmen are so willing to help the underclassmen, like third and fourth years come in after their clinic time and they just come into the sim clinic and help us. Mm -hmm. and that has been so special to me because I've learned so many tips from the upperclassmen. Um, yeah. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's so huge. You know, it really is. No, I, whenever, whenever you can, people coming into dental school, uh, make sure if you all have like a big type program, make sure you reach out to your big. Yeah. Really talk to upperclassmen because they know a lot, especially within that clinic transition. Oh, and I do actually want to ask you this as well. Clinic. Um, how did your school handle it? Like first year, were you all kind of in there assisting? Um, when do you all start seeing patients? Like how is your whole clinic schedule split up? So our school, um, we don't start seeing our own patients until third year. Okay. And then during first year, it is didactic. During second year, it is also mostly didactic. Um, the only patient exposure that we've gotten so far is uh, the summer between first and second year. Okay. We were in there assisting the fourth years. Okay. That's when we got to inject, uh, give local mm -hmm. patients. Yeah, okay. um, and next quarter, we're starting perio. So we're going to be giving profies to patients. But our patient contact has been pretty limited for the yeah, first okay. two years. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. And so, Laura, we are now at the end of the interview. And I want you to give the audience one last gem. You know, not even if they would necessarily want to come to UW, but what is something that you would tell somebody who's applying to dental school this cycle? Mm, it's my number one tip. If you're applying this cycle, would be to ask for all the help you can get. Yep. Like your personal statement, make sure that you are editing the heck out of that. Make sure that <laughs> it's perfect is everything that you want it to be. Make sure that it really showcases who you are. And I think that having multiple people in your life uh, read it who know you mm -hmm. will really get that down and make you stand out in your personal statement. Also, just like relax, relax. Yep. It's a stressful process, I know. Um, but really make sure that you are satisfied with the application and that you really got <laughs> <laughs> you were flowing. You were flowing. Okay, I should have just stopped. Oh my god, it was good. Like you were flowing. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just. I just kept rambling. Okay. It was good. It was good. Okay, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you again. I'm gonna ask you again. Are you ready though? Okay. That was good. That was good. Like I thought you were. I was like, okay, bet. Like this is it. This is great. Like, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do the, the first thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, Laura. So now we are at the end of the interview. Um, I want you to give the audience one last gem, and not even necessarily if they want to go to UW, but you know, if they're just applying this cycle. What is that one piece of advice that you would give them? Mm. My top piece of advice would be to ask others for help in your application process. Mm -hmm. Ask current dental students if you know any. Ask your dentist that you are shadowing. Um, ask them to look at your application, review it. Um, I know for me, I asked my personal dentist to look my personal statement over and he was really good at picking out my strengths and he was like, oh, you should really highlight this part about your um, background mm -hmm. and so that is really nice because they have the experience they know they're they've been in those shoes before they know what they know what dental schools are looking for mm -hmm. um, they really know you and so they can really highlight who you are in the application and I think it's really nice to get those different perspectives because even though you may think you know who you are best in your personal statement when you're writing your application and stuff you never know, you might miss something that's really strong about you and right. they'll probably point it out so that you don't miss that. Great, great. Well, all right, thank you so much, Laura. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if somebody has a question for you, is there any way that they can reach out and uh, message you? 
Yes, the best way would be to email me, uh, lauravsmiles at gmail.com. Um, I do get a lot of DMs and like YouTube comments, but sometimes you just don't have time when you're in school to look yeah. at all those. <laughs> so That's email, at that email is the best. Okay, great. Um, everybody, obviously, Laura is here to help. So please, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, but once again, Laura, on behalf of Future DDS and all of our subscribers, all of our viewers, thank you so much for taking the time out to help us today and give your perspective on school. Thanks. I hope it was a little bit helpful for those trying to decide. It was really great talking to you. Great, great talk to you as well. But um, everybody, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe and the notification bell so that you know whenever we post new content. But until next time, see y'all later.